y'all. Welcome to Air Hustles. We have a very interesting topic today. Chanel, you want to tell them what we're going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about entertaining the nonsense. We don't got time to be entertaining nonsense. It's too much happening to be entertaining some bull. And we got a guest with us today. And she's going to shed some light on some (laughs) nonsense that she is clearly not entertaining or tired of entertaining or don't know how to to disengage. But we're going to show her, tell her, help her, or she's going to tell us how to disengage. (laughs) Because it could go both ways because we into learning just like we into giving the, giving the opinions. Wait, so who's going through something? Chanel, you going through something? What, what? I don't know if I'm <laughs> going through something because I don't necessarily entertain nonsense. Um, when you look at my face, you already know when I had enough. Because <laughs> I kind of walk away from you in the middle of it. It sounds rude, but once I get annoyed with the conversation, I just say, excuse me, watch my back. Oh my <laughs> and I goodness. walk away. I just uh, politely excuse me, um, a, a part in my back, and I walk away from you because I'm more, because I I'm you know I'm easily distracted. I, I I don't got time. I get annoyed, so I walk away. I, it's it's just nonsense. I don't got time. Well, I have been entertaining a lot of nonsense lately. Mm. But uh, Tanita, mm. I don't know if you want to go first, or you want me to talk about my nonsense. Well, sweetheart, I don't have any nonsense. I'm like Chanel. So I don't necessarily have nonsense. I know how to snip it in the butt real quick. Real quick. People know my facial expression, so they already know I'm very blunt. So once you bring to me bull, you know, that, that, that the BS, I'm going to be like, hold on. <laughs> Watch my back. <laughs> Before you even move forward, you know I don't do excuses or drama. So mm. I'm not going to I don't have any. But what okay. irritates me is how you have grown people mm. who feed off of drama Mm. And they have excuses for everything. Mm. You too damn old to have an excuse as to why something happened 20 years ago. You grow now, move on. <laughs> right. Mm. And I stand people who will hold them, they'll hold their own self um, growth up behind something happened when they was four. I get it. Mm. Talk about it, get over it, and move on. There shouldn't be an excuse to everything as to why you're not moving forward. It shouldn't always be an excuse. I hate excuses. Hold yourself self accountable. Right. Absolutely. Whatever happened when you was a kid, it That's happened. Right. It happened it, yesterday. It happened. There were some consequences. Yeah, it was a setback. But come Absolutely. on now. That setback was a setup forward. for you to get up. And even if Listen. it was yesterday, at, the sun, at some point, you got to say, you know what? Okay, I take ownership. I can't blame it on all on somebody else because I'm grown. So at some point, right. I got to say, you know what? I no longer want this. I want something different. So I have to be able to step out and say, no more right. excuses. Let me do this. But it's so many of us that have so many goddamn excuses and it's so sad because they always want to have the most to say. You'd be like, but everything you're talking about is an excuse. Us people, Mm -hmm. black people got a lot of excuses. It's not just Mm -hmm. black people and it's not just old people either. Like I was just talking to somebody who was like, no, I'm not affectionate because my parents never were. Or I'm strict (laughs) because my parents were. Like, Mm -hmm. Everything's an excuse at some point. Like, Everything. The white man. You know that mentality. Right. Well, we talked it's about because that. Of back uh-huh. then. It's because it is. No. No. Whenever whatever happened, you weren't there at that time and point. So <laughs> whatever you put yourself in, you put yourself in. <laughs> Quit blaming people for that. So yeah, I don't I don't necessarily we'll get it. Right. But Rochelle, so, you talking about you got some nonsense. Thank that you. you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> she's, trying to skirt, she's trying to skirt around the issue. No, she, listen. Yeah. Well, y'all know how I know, nice I know I you. am to people. I, I know you. <laughs> this is why I don't have successful relationships because I entertain a lot of nonsense. And I, mm-hmm. you know. I, I second that. <laughs> like, and and I'm, uh, I'm on third. I got I got two <laughs> fingers and two thumbs up. Two, two, two thumbs listen. and two toes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's hard though, y'all. Like it's not. That's an excuse. I right really there. try. So listen, I try not to entertain in the nonsense. I try to have communication, but the communication from the opposite party seems to be a bunch of nonsense to me. That, you know. But then that means you don't have good communication. Mm-hmm. Because it because the communication is not it's not on what you're saying. It's on the the receiver's end. It's how they receive the information. So if they didn't receive the information, the way you put out the information, you're not an effective communicator at all. Or because they don't want to understand it. Okay, so why you ain't cut them off? 
And again, that's another excuse for you to say that instead of you taking accountability, you put another excuse on somebody else. That's your issue. No, right I there. take I take a lot of accountability for this because I already know that this is something that I do. You know, what but I'm that saying? means okay. you keep, but you know it, but you're still doing it. Right. Because well, and we spoke about that. We said, um, uh, what, what did we say? What did we say in James? And James, he said, um, uh, uh, you, faith with no works is, is dead. Mm. Right dead so if you you know all of this right. stuff but you ain't acting on it, it what's the point of knowing I right. rather Why not do we know do that? and i'd rather not know and, and be stuck in limbo than to know and be stuck because mm-hmm. i try to understand the other where the other person is coming from but after trying to understand for a certain amount of time it makes you think like you know this person really is just not you know they're full of it and, you know, they really can't get their point across. And I just really don't understand why they are not, you know, they don't understand this is why they can't progress either. You know what I'm saying? So then we both end up kind of setting each other back. And we all have our reasons for, you know, entertaining nonsense, whether it's from, you know, children's fathers that we're not with, exes, relationships that we're in. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, that's what you got to work That's you got to set boundaries. At the workplace. <laughs> right, right, right. And a lot of a lot of us we we lack that in the beginning, especially in the beginning of our relationships, the boundaries. We we work through it and then we realize that something is not going properly. So then we're like, okay, so now I don't like this, we gotta do this. But when you should really set it from the beginning. And I'm guilty. It sounds of doing that. like sorry to interrupt, but it sounds like you're working more on on understanding than to be understood. Because right. yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but I need you to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I, uh, you want to be uh, you want to understand what somebody else is going through but they haven't understood what it was that you was telling them mm. you got mm. to, to set boundaries set limits put them set the bar high and if you can't meet this i'm sorry for you right. because i have because because my road in you even though we might be going to the same destination but some everybody everybody path is not the same Everybody's we we that destination is the same, but the paths are very different. And I and I said this to you before. We we misunderstand what someone's role is in our life. Mm-hmm. We got them people who are only there for a season. Then we got them people that's only there for a reason. Then we got some lifetimers, and those lifetimers are the inner circles. Those are the people that are supposed to be there. Those other pe- girl, you know how many clients I done had, and I told I told my clients I said, listen. You're supposed to be the Beyonce in your own little, you know, group. You ain't supposed, uh-huh. everybody else is supposed to be the supporting cast. In right. your movie, you the lead. In your movie, you the head. Everybody else is supporting cast. You can't let somebody come, and you can't let a cast member who is a, what, what do we call those cast members? What do they call The extras? Because that's what they are. They extras in your movie. They dictate in the script. Extras don't dictate. You show up, do your job, and go home. You giving people too much of you, right? Cut them off. This is the you season you you believe this is the season for forgiveness. I oh, I agree with you, <laughs> but to forgive somebody and to cut you can forgive people and cut them off, right? I forgive you. We just can't work together, right? I forgive you. I still love you, but this ain't gonna work. No hard right. feelings, but I got but you, I got I got a destiny, and you ain't a part right. of it. And you also have to understand your role in that person's life. Everybody, mm. if they're no matter what that person is in their life, you're human like everybody else. But it's not your role to fix people. It's not your it's not your role to mm. make them understand their potential. It's not your role to be a mama or dad. So a lot of women end up going to relationships with broken men and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And their, oh gosh, and their so initial many. idea is of fixing somebody. You can't fix anybody. You can't make your role in somebody's life more than what it is. You're putting mm. a title on something that's not present. So you end up going in something, creating something that's not there, and then hurting yourself and blaming somebody else when it was you. Right, right. and you know, because I even you do misunderstood that. your assignment. Absolutely. Right, like I even do that, you know, outside. Like when I meet people, I say, I always try to help, even if I don't know them, you know what I'm saying? Like I met a friend at my job last year and she wanted to move, she didn't have enough money. I gave her the money to move like that. And I didn't even know her for a long time. And she was like, wow, Rochelle, like, you know, she paid me back, but she's like, 
for us not to be friends that long, like, I don't even have family members and friends that I've known longer than you that would have even done that. So, I don't that's want... A, it's that's a something... genuine spirit. Right, but that's the, that's the spirit that I carry in my relationships, and I've noticed that it's not good. You know what I'm saying? Because you're a giver. You got to learn when to give and when not to give. You got like to learn when job- to say... When somebody right. says, I need, you got to learn to say, you know what? Let me learn to close my mouth. Not every <laughs> need is what she meant by me. But even if huh? it's not... Because someone, they not say that they someone need, comes though. along and waters it. Right. Right. Like, the lady I was telling you about at my job is doing so well. Today, I came into work. I brought her a bag of clothes. She was like... I was like, oh, ask the group. Come see me. She's like, why? What is that? I said, clothes. She said, from who? I said, from me. She's like, oh, my God, thank you. I said, you know, you're starting school. You're about to go on job interviews. I'm going to look out for you. These are some things that I can't fit, so I just want to give them to you. You know, that's just the kind of spirit that I have. And usually you would look, in the Bible it says to do this stuff, to look out for people that can't look, you know, out for themselves, or if you can be a hand to others, then do that. So I feel like I'm serving by doing that. It does, but but you also have to remember, you also have to remember some things is God's responsibility. Absolutely. Some things is we can, we trying to carry God weight. We and that ain't what we supposed God's to do. God's job. God don't need our help. And you getting in the way of God doing what he needed to do for right. that person. We getting so in the way. God say move. His way. Right. When God right. say move, you move. But you moving on your own will messes up God's work for us. So you actually mm-hmm. sometimes are in the way. So that right. man that's homeless, that you like, he's really cool. We hang out. He's really nice. He just lost his own. I moved him in with me. You moved in a man you didn't know with good intentions, but could have set yourself up for failure. God could have right. had a job waiting for him at the end of that corner. That man about to turn the corner off this man a job to put him up, but you took him on. So now he has no job. And now he's waiting for God to make the next move. When God had already made moves, you stepped in. Mm. So you have to gave me the chills. She <laughs> gave, uh, you you I, have to know when me. to stop in. That's why I said a lot of women, we end up, we're not, a, we're not their mothers. We're supposed to be their counterparts. We you are girl help me. Right, you are the, and even then we go too far because a girlfriend is not a wife. A girlfriend Mm. puts on a wife's cap when that's not her title, and then gets mad when she doesn't get. She gives the wife benefits, doesn't receive the wife benefits, Mm -hmm. and then it's oh, I'm mad at you. No, you mad at yourself because we went into this thing knowing you're not my wife, I'm not your husband, you know, and we still you you still moved in that manner knowing it's not just what it was, but then you're mad at that person. So we need to understand the titles. Your title, if your title is a girlfriend, be just that. Right. Well, being a girlfriend, boyfriend don't mean being in the same house. I don't like the word shacking up because life happens, things happen. I don't like the word shacking up, even though that's what they use. But mm-hmm. you need, to, I need, you need, a, you need to take care of you and have your own. I do the same. And if we end up crossing paths and meeting up and going the extra mile, then that's different. But right. we just in build together. Right. But when you, it's one sided, it's going to always be one sided. And you're so used to giving. Rochelle, on your end, you're so used to giving, you become the giver and you don't know nothing else. So when it's time to receive, you don't know how to receive. Some point you gotta say, you know what, okay. You you gotta back up and say, you know what, okay, you know what, I am used to giving. I have a genuine heart and I'm going to continue to give, but I gotta learn when to give and when to close my mouth and sit back. It's discerning. I've gotten a little bit better. Right. I feel like I've gotten a little bit better though. Have you just said what you're still doing? So obviously you want, <laughs> no, you want no, to no. believe that, but you're not. <laughs> I stopped it. I ended it a little too late, but you know, I take full responsibility because I've def- it could have definitely been in my control, but I allowed it but to go. But you're still that entertaining the nonsense. <laughs> Absolutely. I think she gets off to it, honestly. No, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the, the reason why I know that you're still entertaining is because when you say his name, you get giddy. Yeah, you see, and I guess, mind you, I don't see her face, but she had a smile on her face when she just said no. I right. do, I do. I right. know, I, do. I know you. you big, know big, you in the ear. In the ear. I know. Right. It's been years when I've seen this heifer, but I still know that that's what she just did. And no. Stop entertaining it. But how do you? Um, T, tell her how to stop entertaining the nonsense. Because so, I, think I stopped. You, you didn't no, stop. Because you you still get it. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't understand. You know, he's a, he's no, a good we, person. He's just not it good don't ma- It don't matter. Right? It don't matter. It don't matter. That person can be good all day. Right. But because the way you're interacting with that person, you're making them lack, less of what they should be and can be. 
because of your response and your interaction with that person. And you know what's so funny? I told him that today. But yeah, but should. again, you shouldn't have told him that. That's based on your reaction to him. So now he knows. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, because you, you enter- his, uh... because you entertain entertain a, a little bit of conversation, you are stagnating him. Yes, he you're stagnating your own where growth. God wants him to be because you are you're interceding in something that ain't none of your business. Mind your business. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't know if I can cuss on inter- him, but you know, <laughs> I'm interceding in something that's not my business. Yes, it's ma'am. not your business. It's not your business. Out of it, that is it. And it wasn't the one that wasn't something that you were supposed to be in anyway. I told you, we were talking about kingdom relationships, we were talking about kingdom marriages. And you you told me, well, this person could quote scripture. And I said, well, the devil could quote scripture too. Right. You know how many people sit up in my church and sit, they sit there, mm hmm, (laughs) pastor, yes, uh huh. As soon as the sermon is over, did you see what Sister Mary Clarence had on? The devil is alive and well and walking the earth because somebody can quote scripture. Don't we we misunderstand what our, what God's intention for for bringing that person into our lives? We right. we turn something that should have been an assignment into a romantic relationship. You think in this what person that? brought you closer to God when technically you, it's not it's not that you didn't know God or God didn't know you. You just you forgot your you forgot God's number and forgot to call him. Mm-hmm. So you 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 allow somebody else to come in and tell you how to pray, when to pray, um, w- what you should, what what the word says. Don't nobody can't tell me what the word says because I read the word for myself. You're not gonna sit here and dilute the word for me or pick and choose what you want, what you right. want to tell me, what you want me to believe. Right. He, he was an assignment. But, but listen, I got a better one for you. I'm sure your mm. kids play your kids play sports, right? Yeah. And you know they have a they have a tournament at the end of this end of the season, right? Yep. And it comes to an end, right? Mm-hmm. Not everything's supposed to stay with you. Everything is seasonal. Every mm-hmm. relationship is seasonal. Not every mm-hmm. relationship is supposed to last that long. Mm-hmm. There's some people that come mm-hmm. into contact with that cross your path just for you to say, "Have a good day." You were supposed mm-hmm. to tell right. them that to brighten their day so they can move on and have a better day. And whatever they were contemplating that w- wasn't supposed to be in any way, shape, or form godly to alter it. That person could have been walking to jump off a bridge or walking to go into incoming traffic. But because you said have a good day, you just brighten their spirits or say, hey, you look nice today. You make them feel better about themselves. Not mm-hmm. everything is prolonged. Of, oh, let's exchange numbers. Oh, let's hang out. Nothing. Everybody is not supposed to know who you are on an intimate level. Everybody's not supposed right. to know who you are on a personal level. So right. for, your spirits so, were supposed to meet and that's all. Right. And I think for Rochelle, I love you dearly. I've known you for what? Over <laughs> about 15 years now. I can right. definitely say, I can definitely say, you can say all day long that I love me, but until you gen- genuinely love you and walk in loving you every day, you're going to continue to, in- to entertain this. Right. Because you have to some, at one point saying, you know, I love me enough to not want that drama in my life. I love me enough not to entertain it, not answering a phone call, responding to a text message, not even responding to a response in passing. That's negative. Right. That's going to, that's going to alter my spirit for the day. So as long as you allow that in your spirit, you at that you're at that medium point of where you know, but you ain't crossed over yet. Because once you mm. accept the fact that I love myself enough not to entertain you, nothing's right. gonna move me, shake me, or get me to respond to you in any negative way that's gonna change who I am and have me come mm. out of character. Right, and that's very true because especially with family, not even um, romantic relationships, like. I feel like I've taken a lot, a lot of shade, a lot of, you know what I'm saying, a little small talk. And, you know, I've always still been nice to the same people that throw it my way. And since I started cutting them off this year, I've gained so much more peace in that area. Like, I've cut off a lot of family. Ch- Chanel, you see took, how she yeah, keeps going long- back to family, but she, we we're talking about men, and she keeps trying to go around the whole man part, right? No, I'm you not see her, that. You, you I'm see not her dodging, certain. you see her dodging no. these things? No, but I'm, she, I'm serious. She dodging like, like hell. She dodging. No, I'm letting you know the growth because with family, like that's been, I'm letting you know, that's been going on for years. And it just happened this year or within the past year that I just started to realize that I need to cut these people off because okay, but so they're let still me, getting let me at me. To what, still, you know what I'm saying? Let me but explain I get, something. So with the, that I'm a- the, rec- the recent guy that I was dealing with was, it did take a while. And when, as women, we can all say, that sometimes we deal with a guy for a little bit longer than we need to. You know what I'm saying? 
right. and I can own up to it. So he's I kind of do get his 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 expiration date, but I kind of do get a little closed off because I feel like some people can't accept the fact that okay, she learned her lesson with him. But she's moving at her own pace. I got to accept that as a person. Like, I get a lot of people that are really, like, harsh with me in the sense, like, Rochelle, you're not doing it, Rochelle. But if you really get to know Rochelle, that's why I'm saying it's not just those relationships. And then if you go to my past and you really dig deep into my past and how I grew up and everything and how my parents are, you know, they've been together for over 30 years sleeping in separate rooms. They've never left, but this always had this love-hate relationship. And okay, you're not your parents. No, and, we don't care, like, and we don't care about your past because your past is just that. It's your past. We worried about right. your present so no, that you can move on into your future. But that's not so, kind of rude to cut it off like that. But I'm just letting <laughs> you know. Like, you never know. Like You know I don't mean to be rude, person. but you know, and you know. No, but I'm it's just saying, if we talk, if we talk, if we, but if we talking about entertaining nonsense, we're not going that direction. So if we're talking about entertaining nonsense, at some point you have to, at some point you got to, you got to control the narrative. You got to control the conversation. So if it goes left and you go with it going left, then you entertain it. But if it's going left, you're like, hey, man, yeah, I'm not doing it. Either we go on this, if this is what it is, accept it or not, and be on your way. You have to learn to put your foot down, no matter how you feel. A lot of women, you do it because they're lonely or they need something from a man. Uh-huh. Not knowing that, okay, once you stand your ground, you have way more opportunity to grow for yourself compared to giving in to what that person's giving. Because you may give in to something not knowing you're giving into, and then you stuck and screwed and trapped. And now at this point, you have excuses after excuse after excuse of why you're still around or why you still did this. Well, oh, I got kids by him. Well, you know, he didn't have nowhere to go. No, you entertained his nonsense for too long, and now you're stuck with his issue. You took on his problems now. Now they're your problems. Mm. So you got to learn when to separate the two. And let's... let's, let's we know that we have, you know, we have our forces. We have summer, winter, spring, fall, right? Mm-hmm. And as our seasons, as we go through our seasons, the, the things change. Everything in nature starts to change. So th- we see clearly that time is passing, that things are changing based on the season. We are stuck in these, pot- and I'm not going to say just you, Chef. Absolutely. We, are stuck we all do the same seasons thing. Because we haven't learned from them we haven't learned from past seasons so we can't move into the next season because we haven't conquered what was so already we we are carrying in this season what we should have already left behind in the last one so while we're saying yes you have over the past year you have made amends or, or pruned your garden with family members and and weeded out people who shouldn't have been there but then you went and added somebody in to take the place of somebody that you replaced so you right. just you just put a weed in the in the rose garden. Right. When you pruning, everything must go. This is the everything must go say. Everything must go. Everything. If I gotta if I gotta pay you to take it away, just take it away. This is if a it does not thing. if it does not add value to my life, it must go. If and it hinders me, holds me back, or holds me down, it must. What did go. we say? What did we say, Rochelle? We said um, the other day. We said. Um, we want, we, this is math. Remember when we talked about the Jesus math? Because we was watching the, the, the generals. We was watching the sermon with the generals, um, Pastor Todd's family. And it was the, it was the, it was the God math, the Jesus math, right? We, we need to start subtracting in order for God to add. We need to take some things away because he can't fill us up if we too full. We need to start emptying so he can then pour more into us. We right. got to get rid of anything that's unnecessary, the, the nonsense. And we have to like, be comfortable in letting go. Like, I'm year old. We got to be comfortable <laughs> and you got to be comfortable in letting go. Our biggest issue is not being able to let go. We because say we, we let fearful. go. We say we, we say we let go. We say we done. We say we tired. We say, hey, man, it's time for you to move on. But we don't let go. So we still holding on, talking all that ish. But we ain't letting mm-hmm. go. You got to go, go, go. Okay, they walking away, but you still hold the rope. At some point, you got to be able to say, you know what? I am letting go and I'm not afraid to let go. So if that means being alone, I'm fine. If that means my child, you know, my older child learning how to stand on his own two feet, but I'm going to be there to make sure, you know, if he, I'm, I'm there to help out and help direct, but I need him to stand on his own two feet. That's fine. But at some point you have to let go of the rope because you're hindering yourself. And again, everything becomes an excuse. 
we can't helicopter people. We got to let people, we are stunning their growth. Remember we, talked about, the, we talked about the people that you, you know, the, the helping. You are a natural giver. You, you help. And there's nothing wrong with it because that's that's what we are. That's what we're here to do, okay? But we talked about the people that you can't help. There's some people that you cannot help. One, because they don't want your help. Two, because they don't think they need help or they don't, you know, you have to decide, or not even you have to decide. You have to know when, you, when your role is needed as the helper. And you knowing you have more to you. offer. More to, and may, knowing that you have more to offer, right? Than, and, than and, when, and when the when the help you've given <laughs> needs to come to a cease because mm -hmm. you don't want to help to the point where you handicap, right? Everything you help does not have to be um, material things. Everything you help with does not have to be finances. There's other ways of helping people. That doesn't mean you you give what you have. There's other forms of helping. It can't automatically be well. They needed this. I gave. I gave, I gave, I gave. Okay, yes, you're, yes, you are, you are a cheerful giver, and God likes a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. But what else do you have? But what else do you have to offer? Right. Yeah. Well, you, to those yeah. of you out there who are dealing with someone who, and it's hard for you to, you know, grasp this concept because it's, you know, easier, easy for some people, and others have to learn. You know, it's a road, but, you know, just make sure you have some people in your corner that understand that that's your road. And, you know, you learn and you take these ladies' advice. But I definitely do believe that people do come in for a season. And he definitely served a season. And trust me, I was benefiting from that season. And, you know, you live and you learn and you grow. And when you can learn from something, then that means, you know, you've gained but some then, wisdom. But that's the that's the importance of having these conversations and having good girlfriends, because you can't have you can't walk this earth by yourself and 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 just be living willy nilly and nobody is correcting you, especially and you have to be able to correct somebody as well as receive correction. If it's in love, you got to correct in love and you have to. Re and as the receiver of the correction, you have to understand that the correction is not coming um, because this person just wants to call you out. This Absolutely. person is correcting you because I see No, I don't you. think so. But no, no, I no, feel not like... just, I'm talking to our eavesdroppers. Oh. But I feel uh. like we, <laughs> we were just talking in our last episode about, you know, how people hold stuff in and they don't really want to tell people stuff because they don't want to get attacked for, you know, yeah. feeling some kind of way. And well, I feel like are, that's, that's more um, so the person not being in a place to receive. Not everybody's going to be in a place to receive what you what you're sharing to them. That's whether that's it be true. somebody, whether it be somebody close to you, a sibling, a relative. Not everybody's going to be in place to receive. So you, it's one of the things you have to, you have to play that out. You got to say, okay, well, let me start a conversation based on how they receive this beginning. I know they're not in place to receive the ending, so I'm not about to sit here and talk to a brick wall. So, but you have to be willing to come back if you love that person enough to say, you know what, when you're ready to have this conversation, hit me. And you do have something that'll call you back, like, hey. You know what? I'm going through a lot and I'm ready. Whatever you were willing to give me, I feel like I was supposed to give you a call. And then that's when they're ready to receive it. Whether it be like, hey, man, what you're doing is not cool. Or like, I'm really proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. And how can I help you? But right. they have to be in a place to receive. Not everybody's going to be able to receive it. Period. Right. Right. And you don't want to waste your time doing it because then you drain yourself for no reason. Because you just told right. somebody stuff that needed to be told to them, but not at that particular time. It could be two right. years from now, two months from now. 10 years from now, you may still have the like same word advice. for when them, people, just not when, you know, you're supposed to give it, you have to wait. See, when people come to me, I'll be like, listen, I, I'm not going to give my advice. I want you to do what you, you know, know is best for you, even when it's, you know, close friends, family members, because uh, you never know how people are going to um, receive what you have to give to them. And sometimes you just got to Living well, room, you know? I, I I can understand that. I, I I can understand why you don't like to give advice because it can go all the way left. Um, but like you're getting to know me and I give me advice. See, because you giving me advice doesn't mean I have to act on it. 
it's just an, it's a dip it's another Absolutely. way for me to see my options if no one your parents give right. you advice you don't use the advice but you know your options you see somebody else's perspective and you also know that if you do that and that's the outcome you know in the back of your mind whether they tell you or not i told you so you're gonna be telling yourself damn they sure in the hell told me this why the hell didn't i listen and you're more mm-hmm. likely to take that person's advice moving forward because right. the outcome they got, they have told you. But sometimes you do have to right. hit your head a couple of times to understand it because self-experience experience is the best teacher. Going through right. something yourself is the best teacher. Somebody can tell you all day long, hey, hit, hit that corner, you're going to hit your head. Hit that corner, hit your mm-hmm. head. Yeah, whatever. I hit my head. Yeah, boom. Damn, you're right. Let me sit my ass down. Right. And, and, and it says it in the word. We, we discussed this before. In the word, it, you know, the word is God gave us the Bible. He gave us the word because those were instructions, basic instructions before leaving earth. Okay. That's what I call the Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Okay. But because we don't follow instructions, he gave us free will. Okay. That free will comes because you don't want to follow instructions. Now you're going to have to follow, you're going to have to go through experience. You understand? Because you didn't want to listen. Now you're going to have to learn another way. Right. Right. So, so the, 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 now we go back into bumping our head against a brick wall. We go back into make, making, the, making the same mistakes over and over. We go back to going through cycles, cycles of the same stuff, the re- repetition. And we don't understand why these cycles are not being broken. We don't understand why we're not chain breakers. The reason we don't understand why this season looks so much like the last season, look like so much like the season before that is because this, it's not that the seasons look alike. The seasons are the same. Right. They don't just You're resp- like they the same season. Trust me. You respond in the same way. You can't go into something with the same with the with the same ideas, the same person, the same environment, wanting to di- want to change. You can't say, "Hey, God, I want to break this habit of smoking a cigarette in my hand." Mm-hmm. At some point, you have to change. Like God is there; He's always there. He's always mm-hmm. there to support, but He's not going to do it for you. He wants to right. see your actions that you're serious. He don't want to waste his time with you. He's like, "Oh, you know what? When she re- when when they ready, all right, whatever. And hope it's not too late." But you, you, they be expect they expect an immediate miracle from God, but there's no action on their end. Mm. Faith right. without works, so faith without take, works is dead. Right. right, faith without works is dead. That's what you now just we, said. We, we talked about um, Rochelle, and I, and I said I started this conversation. Oh, yeah, I ain't, I don't entertain yeah, no this nonsense. was about me, y'all. I'm sorry that y'all had to be know all my business. Everybody, no, listening, but. no. So no, <laughs> I'm about to air out some of my business because it's, it's, wait, we're gonna have to save it for next episode. Um, all right. So listen, I, I y'all, we're gonna, get, we're gonna get we're gonna get tea back on the next episode. I'm gonna air out my business because I've been every you know I've been built. If you're available, well. you available, T? Yes, ma'am. Let me know. Okay, right. cool. Miss Chanel, I don't know you, but I feel like I know you now. I like you. Because I, like I experienced a meeting. A spirit yeah. me over the phone, girl. God I, I see it did. That. That's that COVID spirit. We can spirit <laughs> me. <laughs> All right, y'all. Oh we'll guys, see you on the next listen, episode. Listen, eavesdroppers, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. You've been on the air with, um, with Chanel, Rochelle, and T. Um, come back for the next episode. We're going to follow up, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace. All right. Bye.